Hi everybody, I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is sorority and Rush consultant, Lori Stefanelli. Lori, thanks for coming in. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course, before we dive into the business of sorority, Rush recruitment consulting, can you first give us the backstory here and explain what made you want to get into this industry in the first place? Yeah, so um, I'm originally from Texas, went to school in Texas, was in a sorority, was very involved in it. And I, as an adult, moved to Chicago where I didn't know anybody and I ended up joining my sororities alumni association. And then after that, I also became the recruitment advisor for the Chi Omega chapter at DePaul University alongside some other really great friends of mine who were also advisors for the chapter. And while I was doing it, this was in 2012, 2013, um, so much had changed from recruitment from when I went through in the 90s and I was taking note of it and just kind of like learning kind of all the back end stuff that happens that nobody really sees. Um, and I had a lot of girlfriends back home in Texas who were reaching out to me saying, hey, I know you're still involved in this. I kind of remember how recruitment works, but not really. And my niece is going through or my cousin or my stepsister, someone was going through that they knew and couldn't really give them the advice anymore that they needed. So they were coming to me and asking me a bunch of questions and you know i would spend hours on the phone with all these friends and my husband who at the time when he was in college he went to georgetown and they did not have a greek life um, presence on campus back then and he was just kind of like what are you doing like what is going on why are you talking to all these people and i was explaining it to him and he was like you should start a business like this could be a thing and i was like you think he's like people i bet would be more than willing to, to pay for your advice and knowledge and you know all this other stuff. So I said, well, I don't know if it's, this is a thing. So sure enough, I Googled it and um, there was two other websites that I came across that actually did it. And I was kind of looking to kind of see what they provided. And I noticed one particular woman was just Alabama based and the other one I believe was in Texas, if I'm not mistaken. I was living in Chicago at the time and I just decided, well, this, the way that it works, the fundamentals are the same no matter where you go. So I was just like, I'll take whoever is going anywhere. And I made a website and I had my first client in 2013 and she was going to Texas Christian University, TCU in Fort Worth, and she pledged um, 80 pi and now has been so successful. She's, I think, got her PhD now and, you know, like she's very you know doing very well and, and all that kind of good stuff so that's kind of how I got into doing all of this well your husband was right on that because we saw recruitment really blow up let's fast forward to 2021 when we saw Bama TikTok really just captivate everyone I went to a school there wasn't a predominant Greek life on campus I believe only three to five percent of students were involved but even I was super captivated so for those who might not be in the weeds with Bama TikTok things like that can you explain what recruitment is sure so the recruitment process every year whether it is formal recruitment in the fall or formal deferred recruitment in the spring is a extremely organized and structured week of little parties basically that each sorority holds. So the way that it is now structured, um, a lot of schools do what's called a values-based recruitment. So they're taking the values that sororities kind of hold near and dear to their hearts, such as philanthropy and sisterhood, leadership, um, involvement days, things like that. And the parties allow prospective new members or PNMs um, to visit each of the sorority and then they kind of whittle them down based on who they feel that they like the most, who's impressing them with their parties, songs, chants, things like that. Um, and then on the flip side, the sororities are doing the same thing. They're whittling down their list of potential new members that they want them to join their sorority based off of things like conversations, essay questions, videos, letters of recommendations, your GPA coming out of high school. All of these things get factored in onto who they want to see come back to their house for another round of parties. So that goes on throughout the week. And then on the last night, which is called preference round, um, you have the option to visit up to two sororities for that day. And typically, if you go to two parties, you will end up with a bid to join one of those two sororities. And can you talk a little bit about how your business fits into this process? So, <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, 
what I do is I kind of have tools and resources for the young women to utilize during that week. So whether it's let's help put together your video, let's help put together a social resume so that you can then ask for uh, re letters of recommendation for that sorority. Um, wardrobe also plays a huge part into that only because there is an expectation on what you should be wearing for each round. Um, sometimes they'll give you a t-shirt to wear, but it's up to you to kind of style it with different bottoms and shoes and things like that. Um, each round gets progressively dressier, so the dresses, you know, and I'm sure you see on TikTok, the girls are showing off their outfits and things like that. So, you know, it's a really exciting time for them to be doing that. And then I also coach them on the conversations. It really impacts them during that during that time because either you're gonna completely vibe with somebody or they're just gonna be like, mm, I think this girl would shine better elsewhere. She's not really Kappa material or Zeta material. We think that you know she'll have a better chance with a different sorority other than ours. Um, and then also I help them with understanding the process. Um, a lot of the times, you know, when you're 18 years old, you have a lot of fear and anxiety starting that next chapter in your life. So when you walk into a house, a lot of girls don't perform as well because they're nervous and they don't know what to do and they don't want to make a bad impression. So I think if they understand the process and how it works and what to expect, that lessens um, you know, their anxiety so that they can be more comfortable and be more themselves. This sounds like it should be a course. Honestly, the amount of time and work that the girls put into joining a sorority, but I am curious, who comes to you? Is it the girl who is about to go to college? Is it her parents? And when do they come to you? I would say it's about 50-50. Um, a lot of the times I have girls who are like, my parents are okay with this, you know, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Um, a lot of it is parents who are coming from the, the you know, area of, I was never Greek, so I don't understand this, therefore I can't offer my child any advice. Um, and I would say they come to me, like, well, right now I'm already getting um, requests for next fall. You know, so another year out, so their girls are in high school still, they're seniors in high school. I do want to do a deeper dive into your business. Can you break down your specific services and explain and expand on how they work? Sure. So um, the way that I've structured my services is through packages. Um, because there is so much information that the girl has to kind of really take in, I don't want to overwhelm them. So I put together three different packages. Each package comes with a one hour session that is focused on a specific topic. And I usually do them in a specific order because it just makes more sense that way. Um, I also give them templates, spreadsheets, to-do lists. They have you know, deadlines for when things need to be turned in. I'm trying to keep them accountable for the work that they're doing because at the end of the day, like I could give them everything that they need. It's up to them to do the work. Um, so usually I'll start with my first package, which is three sessions. My second one is four sessions, and then the third one is the four sessions, but that comes with the on-call availability with me. So if you're struggling somehow and you need me to hop on the phone or FaceTime or anything like that, or go down to the school that you're going to, um, then I can provide that service for them as well. And how far in advance would you say, or would you recommend that someone reaches out to you for these services? So if you're going to school in the fall and your recruitment is in August, um, I typically have girls reach out to me in January before they graduate high school, um, just to reserve a spot. And then I actually start working with them in March or in April. Um, I typically give them the month of May off because that's prom and graduation and, you know, parties and things like that. So they're, you know, pretty busy doing that. So um, we start up again in June and July. For people looking for your services or maybe people who are just curious, what's the biggest misconception you would say that's out there when it comes to recruitment? I think the biggest misconception is that it's going to be easy that you can just, you know, walk in and look cute and that's it, but really like there's a lot of work that goes into it and a lot of preparation before you even step on campus. And I think when they see like how I lay out my plan for them, they're like, "Oh, okay, like this is real." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, like you know, you got to do this." And the girls who actually put in the effort and work the hardest always tend to do the best. And what is doing the best look like? Does the recruitment process differ school to school? Um, for the most part, I think it does. I think it's all about the culture at the school versus the process. 
Um, fundamentally, the base of recruitment is going to be the same at every university. And it's just a matter of like what the culture is there. So I have a girl at UC Berkeley going through recruitment. Her experience is going to be completely different than the girls at Alabama, but the foundation is going to be there. So I think it's just based on, on the culture. And does your business cater from school to school or is it a one size fits all package? It Yes, it caters just because it is going to be significantly different. Um, you know, I had girls at I in Indiana, IU, and it was completely different. It's it's you know, you're in the Midwest versus in Texas or, you know, somewhere else in the South. So um, I do try to cater to the school, the culture of Greek life there, um, because all the sororities are going to be different. The chapters at UC Berkeley aren't going to be the same as the chapters at Bama. So, you know, I do have to do a little research and look into the different schools and their, their Greek systems and things like that um, just to kind of get a feel for, you know, what's out there. And how does this impact placement? I know you were saying earlier that, you know, maybe this girl is in Kappa material. Do you try to cater them to a specific one that they want or one that you feel that they could vibe best in? What does that look like? Yeah, so I feel, you know, I get to know these girls over the course of months as I'm working with them. So I am of the school of thought that I want you to land where it's going to be the best fit for you. So wherever you feel respected, wherever you feel comfortable, um, you know, if you are really liking these girls and not based off a cute TikTok that they made, because um, yeah, those girls look fun and exciting, but you know, if you're trying really hard to change who you are as a person to fit in with a specific house, then you won't be happy. And I definitely explain that to the girls. So having them go in with an open mind um, and not necessarily focusing on one of, you know, two houses or three houses or anything like that. And what's the biggest concern you hear both from prospective new members as well as parents? I think it's the idea of like being judged um, by your peers. I think it's this idea that you're also competing amongst a thousand plus more girls um, to buy for, you know, a couple of you know, invites to that house. So, you know, at Alabama, the pledge classes are anywhere between 120 and 150. Um, but they have this past year, they had almost 2600 girls going through recruitment. So I think it's it's thought of like, this is super competitive. And I don't know where to start or begin to help myself stand out amongst all these other women. And you were just in Alabama for Rush. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? And also you were featured on the HBO documentary, Bama Rush, which really saw this trend, or really capitalized on this trend. So tell us what you saw in Alabama, tell us about the girls there, and why. what sets Alabama's Rush recruitment or recruitment process apart from the entire country? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the largest ones, to be perfectly honest. It's a huge school that has a lot of name recognition and notoriety. <clears throat> you know, their football, um, you know, it, it's huge. Like, people really want to lean into, like, this college experience that is kind of like what is to be expected. Um, being down in Alabama, first of all, the people were extremely nice. Um, I think <laughs> being in New York City for eight years has, you know, made me a little jaded. So when I went down there, I really had to like, oh, okay, wait, I don't have to talk fast. I don't need to like speed everywhere. You know, it was just really relaxing to be down there. Um, everyone was incredibly nice and thoughtful and very, you um, just, you know, welcoming at the same time. Um, it was also kind of bizarre, you know, living here in New York City, I don't have a lot of people that recognize me or, you know, like can, you know, tell who I am. When I went down there, people literally came up to me and they're like, I watch your TikToks all the time. Your advice is great. This is amazing. And it was very shocking for me because I don't feel like I'm <laughs> like so you're an Alabama special. celebrity right I, is what you're saying in Tuscaloosa <laughs> at least um but it was kind of you know interesting and fun and also to meet some of the girls for the first time that I've been working with for over the last you know four or five months um was great I got to meet a lot of their parents for the first time um but yeah seeing all the sorority houses and the football stadium and you know where all the college kids hang out and shop you know like the pants store or effies or um swag you know all these stores that are, have been also been made popular just off the tiktoks it was like well you know when in bama I gotta go to all these different stores and after the girls go through the rush and recruitment process are they private about using a consultant like yourself do you get jobs based on word of mouth what does that look like yeah yeah, so I think there are some girls who 
don't mind telling people. You know, I met some of the roommates and they said that this is my sorority coach. Um, I think now it's becoming slightly more acceptable because of the Bama documentary. Um, and also like people just want to hear the advice that I have to give. Um, and which, you know, I appreciate, but I don't think that a lot of girls are shying away from the fact that they use a rush coach. Um, and it's up to them, I, you know, whatever they feel comfortable doing, I, I really don't care or mind if they don't say that they used me or anything like that, because that's completely up to them. But I also keep their identity, you know, private. Um, on my social media, I'll let people know, oh, my girl's doing this, she went to this house, I'm so excited for her, but I will never release her name. And what does success look like? What does your success rate look like, rather? Um, is it based on if a girl gets into a house or a house of her choice? I would say it's a house of her choice. Um, if, if it comes down to like two houses at the end of prep and one she really loves and the other one's kind of like, eh, you know, then I will coach her on how to like what to say during that, that round so that, you know, she can make sure that she gets a bid to that house. Um, and a lot of the girls this year that I've helped out so far, I had 24 clients this year. Um, and as of right now, I've had 23 um, get bids. So I'm super excited for that. Wow, that that's really incredible. And do you think it was harder, specifically in Alabama, after the documentary, for girls to um, go through the recruitment process? I don't think so. I think when they saw it, it, it um, made it, it kind of shone, shone shined a light on uh you know essentially what could happen what are the possibilities um i think it really encouraged and you know really wanted girls just to go through recruitment and not just at alabama you're we're seeing this trend at all the different schools and campuses big small liberal arts schools you know whether it be in you know upstate maine or florida you know california like you're just really seeing a, a you know a lot of people wanting to join sororities and fraternities now and I know you just got back from Alabama, but can you walk us through that week? What did your hours look like? Were they insane? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I would wake up every morning around 6.30 because the girls would wake up early to get ready, um, you know, 4 a.m. sometimes because you also are sharing a dorm with three other girls and bathrooms and things like that, and everyone's going through. So my day would start about 6.30 in the morning. I, you know, would hop on my laptop. I would keep a spreadsheet for every single girl and tabs for every single round where she was getting invited back to, um, at what times she was going to those parties because if she had a big break, you know, I could meet up for like a coffee, lunch, talk and discuss, um, you know, how she's feeling through the process. Um, and then usually I would, uh, you know, go in and like if she needed something, I had to, you know, run to CVS a couple of times <laughs> for the girls. Um, one of my girls sprained her ankle and I had to take her to the emergency room and sat with her for four hours, you know, because her parents weren't there. There was no one else to take her. Um, so I was doing a lot of meetups, a lot of calls, but at the same time, I had girls at other schools who were, you know, were overlapping with Alabama. So mm -hmm. I was on the phone pretty much from 7 a.m. until about 12 p.m. with a lot of the different girls and moms. Had a lot of phone calls with moms as well. Um, and that's pretty much how my day was. And then in the evenings, we would debrief on everything. How are you going to rank your houses? Who are you liking? Well, let me look back at the notes that we had from the last round. You said you actually really loved them. So what happened this time? You know, just really kind of getting them to take a step back and and really focus on everything that's happened to see the big picture and not to fixate on one little thing. You're really a jack of all trades in this. You're their administrative assistant, yes. their sounding board, everything in between. But I do want to take a step back here and talk about Greek life in general. In pop culture, we've seen both sides of the spectrum from sisterhood, friends for life, to maybe this is a party culture, maybe a toxic culture. Can you break down some of those stereotypes for us? Yeah, I think um, one thing that I will say is that being in a sorority can open a lot of doors for you if you would like it to you know there are girls who are like i'm just here for a good time and that's fine you know that's perfectly okay but for me myself i used it to my advantage to you know get myself out of texas and meet people from different backgrounds and you know job opportunities you know things like that have it's really opened a lot of doors for me so if you want it to work in one way versus the other, that's you know completely fine and up to you. I think one of the biggest stereotypes is that we're 
dumb, vapid, we're only looking for a husband, um, all we want to do is party, um, you know, we're promiscuous, we're, you know, this, we're that, the other. And I think a lot of people, it's like we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. And people, I think, like to keep sorority women in a box. You know, they only want us to be one specific thing. And when we try to change and, you know, basically, you know, try to evolve our sisterhood over hundreds of years, it's still not good enough. And I think that is one of the biggest issues that I have with some of the stereotypes. Um, and I think, you know, we're not all dumb and we're not all stupid. Like, we are clearly in college getting an education. So I think that, you know, a lot of people just like to, you know, they see movies like, you know, Legally Blonde or The House Bunny or, you know, movies like that, which I love. I love both of those movies because I think they're funny. Um, but that's not everything that being in a sorority is about. There's so many girls who dedicate so many hours to service for their philanthropies. They sit on other organizations within their, their campus and community. Um, and I think that stuff is not really portrayed in media, which is fine because that's not what sells, you know? So I get it and I understand it, but I'm not thoroughly happy with a lot of the stereotypes that come out of that culture. Something that really surprised me in the Bama Rush documentary was the history behind uh, sororities. They've been around for over a hundred years mm -hmm. and there is that sisterhood that develops and to see that progression over time was something that was striking to me because I wasn't part of Greek life and to see that was really surprising. But when you look into the future, how is the business of recruitment consulting growing? What do you see the future looking like? Well, I think as far as um, the business side of it growing, I, I mean, there's since I've been doing this and um, having my TikToks um, since 2021 when all of this got really popular, now all of a sudden I'm seeing more people come out and giving advice on TikToks, which is great because I think, you know, like I said, it's, it's destigmatizing like the idea of like, oh my gosh, you have to hire somebody to get you into a sorority, because that's not what it's about. Like, I don't think people understand that what I do, like you said, I'm a therapist, I'm the cool aunt, I'm gonna be somebody who's gonna, you know, give it to her real, um, you know, and a lot of people don't have the patience or willingness to do that. Um, but I'm excited to see other people come out and, you know, what they offer. And, you know, I was watching some of the other coaches on the documentary and the advice that they were giving, I was like, yeah, like that's advice that I would probably give. Um, but there was some advice that some people give and I'm like, ooh, actually, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't not give that advice. But I'm glad that there's other people that want to do this because it's, it is rewarding, it is fulfilling. I love seeing the girls become who they are like I follow them even throughout college and after and it's really nice to see who they become as adults um, but again I don't think a lot of people have the patience for that and is there competition within the industry growing especially after the Bama Rush documentary I think so I think now that there are more people who are wanting to do this um, but like I said I've been doing this for 10 years um, I'm I love doing it and I think for some people it could get really old working with 18 year old girls. <laughs> um, but I, like I said, I love doing it. But yeah, there, there's probably some competition out there. It's, it's all about like, okay, I like this woman. I like what she says. I like what she has to offer. I wanna work with her. I've had people come back to me and say, you know what, we decided to go with a different coach. And I'm, I, you know, that's perfectly fine. Lori Safanelli, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, I loved being here. <laughs>